fall asleep fast in this enchanted bedtime story and guided sleep meditation for grown-ups. You are listening to Autumn Magic at the Witch's Cottage, a calm sleep story that will bring you back centuries in time. Tucked in the heart of an enchanted forest, you revisit three kind witches who help diminish your earthly problems as you enjoy tiny adventures beneath the full moon. Revered for their timeless healing spells, the three sisters combine wisdom and white magic to help guide you on your journey through life. A night of nurturing and self-care is just what you need in the majestic woodlands. So find a safe place to get cozy and drift to sleep. It's time to dream away. I would like to welcome you to Michelle's Sanctuary. I am Michelle, and as you listen, your imagination will bring you soothing escapes. Think of me as a dear old friend on this journey through time and space. I am your advocate for respite and peace at the end of each day. In the sanctuary of your room, body, and mind, you may drift into a dreamscape where solutions prevail, hope is restored, and possibilities for your life are revealed. Tonight is a playground for your inner child as you shut off your critical mind to enjoy the carefree, exhilarating escapism found in fantasy. Let go of my voice at any time you wish if sleep calls to you and you are ready to surrender to its comfort. Remember tonight's sleepy tale and meditation is by your design, so customize it to your whims and fancy. Feel your eyelids become heavy on your tired eyes, like luxurious drapes drawn for the night. They bring you deeper into the quiet, sacred places within you. The backs of your eyelids offer a night canvas where you may lucid dream and explore beyond the physical plane. Let out a sigh, exaggerating your exhale in a way that feels great. Your out-breath signifies that you are ready to release this day and surrender to the comforts of your bed. Be done with anything that disrupts your serenity and bliss. Inhale through your nose, imagining the air is misty and cool. Like a salve, it travels through your nostrils and coats your throat with soothing sensations before it inflates your lungs. The air carries notes of cedarwood, sage, and cloves. Open your mouth and yawn. The yawn casts a spell on your nervous system, signaling to your brain waves to slow down. Exhale and sigh sinking deeper into your bed. You feel so heavy that you could sink through the mattress into another world. Enjoy this pattern of breath as it induces deep peace and relaxation. A wave of light slithers over you like a fog cloaking you in a hue that makes you the most content. As you inhale, yawn, and sigh, 
air breath returns to normal. You notice how much more relaxed you feel now than when we first began. Take note of the magic within you. It may transform your mood and state of being with a gentle shift of intention and actions. This power is your birthright. Use it for your best interests. It's time for the story to begin. Lori Cabot, the first witch of Salem, once said, the witch knows nothing in this world is supernatural. It is all natural. So many things happen in a singular moment, but often the human mind only perceives a few, if anything at all. When we're lost in our thoughts, it's easy to be swept away from the evocative experiences in the delicious present moment. The witches believe there is only one place anyone should consider getting lost. In the splendor of the here and now. Now is the only time you can fully feel the aliveness in your body and be aware of the constant flow of energy. Carla, the senior witch, always remarks that just because you cannot see something does not mean it isn't there. She always invites you to feel and to feel deeply. Your mind drifts to what it was like as a child when you longed to get back to a place or a dream without exactly knowing how. And as a child, your imagination would conjure all the portals in the night that could transport you to this dreamy realm. Perhaps the ceiling in the closet or a secret door beneath your bed. Maybe the portal appeared in the wall or beneath a wooden floor beam that creaked more than all the other floorboards. With each visit to the witch's cottage, you often wonder how and where the portal will appear. The feminine souls have become like family. Sometimes you arrive at their cottage by way of a dream. On your first visit, a meditation brought you on a journey across the night sky and an encounter with an enchantress dangling her legs from a crescent moon. Her silver hair rippled like silky ocean waves, led by the lunar pole. Her finger curled in a come-hither motion, and you landed in the enchanted forest where the witches reside. But this night feels different. You can feel the three sisters beckoning you to visit as they know you have been in need of a new experience. The familiar patterns and stresses of your life have become monotonous, and the witches long to reignite the spark within you, so you may remember the best and the most playful parts of yourself. A sensation comes over you, slipping and sinking. You feel as if you are falling down, 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 like Alice once did through a rabbit hole to Wonderland. You glide through different dimensions and swirling vibrant colors of the rainbow. Muted sounds of the enchanted forest become louder as you float across a crisp baby blue sky. Sunlight pours over clusters of changing leaves below like liquid gold. 
as gravity pulls you to the forest floor. Your heavy cape and layers of clothing and style centuries ago slow you down as you come down and your boots land on the damp earth. The air smells of cedar, a freshwater stream, and wood smoke. As if anticipating your arrival, the red fox stands atop the slick rocks surrounding a stream. He is your spirit animal and guide, and always looks after you kindly. His copper coat blends with the earth-toned leaves that blanket the ground. Not far from the witch's cottage, you can hear their jubilant voices echoing through the woods. The fox's ears perk up curiously, and he is as comforted by their sing-song chatter as you are. For that matter, every being in the enchanted forest is comforted by the witch's presence. For so long as the witches have inhabited the woodlands, they have graced the land with reverence and maintained a deep connection with the environment. The animals and flora understand the gentle easing between seasons and harmony amongst their fellow forest dwellers is purely the doing of the three witches. And as their guest, you are welcome. A friend of the witches is a friend of the forest. Evergreen branches and decaying leaves rustle in the cool late day breeze as if to whisper, welcome back. It feels like a homecoming as you follow the fox through the soft mist that rises like a lavender gray veil. Dewdrops form on the amber, red, orange, yellow, and plum colored leaves and resemble crystal balls. The fox stays close to your side, and occasionally his bushy tail brushes against your warm layers of outerwear. And while the touch is soft, it creates an electric wave of tingling energy that travels up your legs, spine, and scalp in a pleasing way. You walk through the familiar forest as if wafting through a pleasant, recurring dream. Moments like this make you feel like a part of you is always here, connected to the woodlands, untethered from modern demands, and safe in the energetic fortress that these loving witches have fostered with their great intentions and feminine powers. The witch's strength comes from veracity, connection, and authenticity. They balance their individual and collective powers with a sense of humility and reverence for Mother Nature and the expansive universe. They cultivate equanimity with enviable grace. Each time you visit, you embrace your powers and celebrate yourself while remaining awestruck and appreciative of the beauty around you. You feel big and small at the same time. Beyond the fairy dwellings, and the white papery bark of birch trees that reflect the honeyed light. You arrive at the witch's cottage. Of course they sense your arrival long before you show. 
but their faces reveal the same enthusiasm as if it were a surprise. Whenever you visit this hallowed land, your feet hover above the forest floor before crunching down on fallen leaves. You feel lighter when you come to this place, as if levitating and flying are somehow possible. A pumpkin patch before the cottage overflows with plump orange orbs that grow between twisted, thick green vines close to the earth. These uncarved pumpkins magically glow with inscribed messages that the witches hold dear. The following mantras cast their orange-gold glow on the shadows of the forest path. Believe and you will see. Trust your soul. Impossibility is impossible. The answers you seek are meant to be found. The magic will find you. But if it doesn't or takes too long, make your own. The messages on the pumpkins and the rushing sounds of the babbling brook that wraps around the witch's cottage offer the ideal setting for deep repose. The babbling water turns a deep shade of violet this time of year. When the sun slips beyond the horizon and shadows span the forest floor. Surrounded by ivy-like purple leaves with a stream bed of metallic plum-hued rocks, the rich hue awakens your imagination. Outside the juniper wood, an ancient stone cottage, the potion in a cauldron bubbles to its cast iron brim. A cloud of steam travels through the crisp air, leaving a penetrating perfume of spicy cloves, cardamom, violet, belladonna, chamomile, and exotic fruity notes in its wake. You open the door to the knotty wood fence that twists around the cottage grounds like black licorice. Cora is the first to greet you. Dressed in her standard emerald green and black brocade dress, with a velvet cape that flows over her dainty shoulders like the midnight sky. When her slender arms hug you close, this kind witch known to heal all feelings, emotional and physical, your breath catches in your throat. She softly asks, And how have you been, dear? Her tender embrace makes you realize how much you have longed for a maternal hug like this, and you didn't even know it. Even if at times lately you feel guarded and protect your space, in Cora's presence, you realize how much your nervous system has needed this soothing, nurturing connection. A wave of feeling rises up from your feet and causes your eyes to well as you realize how much Cora truly cares and connects when she asks you this. Cora and her sisters know the world you come from can be quite unkind and has been chaotic and challenging beyond what you foresaw years ago. 
but Cora knows as well as you that a night at the cottage will be enough to restore you so you may return feeling vibrant and confident once more. She brushes her slender warm fingers across your forehead and down your cheek and whispers, as always, you have arrived with divine timing. You'll never know why, but you always believe her. When around the witches, you have an intuitive trust that is unflappable. Every positive experience in the enchanted forest reminds you of your innate prescience and divinity. Learning to embrace your intuition empowers you in your routine life to make choices in the best interest for your body and your soul's journey. The fox remains outside the gate and Cora smiles at him and says, Come join us after twilight. His coal eyes sparkle and he seems to nod in a fox-like way before dashing off into the woods. Cora ushers you inside the cottage where Carla and Ava have piled hordes of bizarre items on the rustic wooden dining table that could host a dozen dinner guests. The kittens have grown since your last visit in the spring and are now curious cats that paw at twine that flows off the table like spaghetti strands. Mosaic patterned ceramic bowls contain feathers, tufts of cotton, and patches of silk and velvet. There are four miniature cottages made from twigs, colorfully painted wood scraps, and bark foraged from the woods. Carla and Ava rush over to hug you and greet you. They insist you join them and design your own tiny cottage. Ava, the middle sister, encourages you to decorate the birdhouse-sized dwelling for the night's surprise adventure. You eagerly join the witches and design a nest inside the cottage that serves as the bed frame for a mattress stuffed with collected feathers. You hang tiny bunches of dried lavender and sage on the walls of the small cottage. You place precious stones inside to act as tables and seats. The witches sing as they designed their own dollhouse-sized cottages and find perfect harmony in songs you do not know yet are hauntingly familiar. A gray, long-haired cat curls at your feet and purrs softly as you work. You add pops of color that appeal to your preferences. And once finished, you pick up the tiny house in your hands and spin it in the last of sunlight that streams through the multi-paned windows of the cottage. You feel the pride you once felt as a child when you learned to create something on your own and explored your artistic side. Each of the four tiny cottages is different. Some are painted in vibrant colors and others have the rich luster of molasses. Carla leaves the table and removes a frying pan of biscuits from the oven and wraps them in cotton tea towels in a wicker basket. Cora says everyone must hurry as 
the sun is about to set and the spell must be cast at twilight. The four of you collect your tiny cottages and head outside to where the violet stream joins a pond that is surrounded by trees dressed in autumn's most opulent hues. The fiery red sun casts the dewy grass and fallen rust-colored pine needles and metallic orange light. The witches placed an overturned wooden crate at the edge of the pond. A small ladder that is the length of your arm leans against the crate. Plush mint green moss and scarlet rose petals cover the top of the crate. Cora instructs everyone to arrange their tiny home atop the moss. You place your cottage in the center, and the three witches arrange theirs around yours. Ava places four thimbles filled with tiny straw and wood chips in front of each cottage, along with a regular sized match. You're not quite certain what will unfold, but part of you imagines how nice it would be to spend the night in the dollhouse dwellings. Carla looks at you, a glimmer in her eye as she reads your thoughts. My dear, when problems feel too big, sometimes we must remember how small we are in this vast universe. When we become small, our problems do as well. And tonight, we will celebrate the feeling of awe. Ava and Cora come and wrap their arms around you, and you follow Carla, the sage witch, to the cauldron. The red fox stands in the glow of the firelight, a guardian and ally. Carla removes a wooden ladle from the steaming pot, Petals and herbs float atop the translucent silvery potion that cools quickly in the autumn air. The sun disappears as Carla explains. This potion will create a dreamscape until the sun rises and you will awaken at home in your bed when it is all said and done. Are you ready for a tiny adventure, my dears? Excitement brings goosebumps to your skin, followed by that familiar, soothing wave of trust. You sip the floral and minty potion, and it flows down your throat, silky and warm. Carla and her sisters sip from the ladles next, as Carla says. Down we go, may we always remember this magnanimous world and all its splendor. Inch by inch, pound by pound. You shrink over the course of a minute or two. It is just the right pace for your perspective to change. The world gradually becomes bigger and bigger, as if you are aging in reverse. You go back to the curious mind of a toddler when the world was new and adventure was around every corner. You become smaller than a dragonfly. The pine needles around you now seem like the size of surfboards in comparison to what they once were. You wiggle your tiny fingers and toes and begin to laugh spontaneously with the witches. You don't know why, but the pleasure of being small and seeing the world this large 
makes you giggle. Your cheek muscles softly burn as your chest rises with each laugh and content sigh. Cora is the token leader on this night of exploration. And she brings you and the other two through the pumpkin patch. You see a reflection in the opal dewdrops that form on the feathery green leaves and cleanse your face with the cool water. The witches hike up the vines that lead to the pumpkins, choosing the messages that most appeal to them. You see a new message appear on a squat and fat pumpkin that reads, The more you play, the more you understand. With a playful heart, you climb atop the pumpkin and wrap your arms around its thick stem to balance. Carla and Ava wait for Cora to count down from three And all at once, you slide down the waxy exterior of the pumpkins to land on a bed of soft, pillowy leaves. How did you ever forget the importance of play? Even the animals of the forest know how important it is to play as it keeps them self-aware and adaptable to an ever-changing world. The fox waits at the edge of the patch patiently as you and the witches dash under vines and slide across the tops of crinkling fallen leaves. You dip beneath the wooden fence The posts appear as grand as twisted trees. The fox lowers his tail, so you may climb up the fluffy copper and ivory fur to ride on his back. You meet the witches on top, and the fox waits for Cora's command to charge through the night. You settle between his shoulder blades and thread his fur through your fingers to hold on. Cora declares, Ready! And the fox takes off along the stream. His paws patter on the earth and vibrations travel through his taut muscles. You rise and land on his plush coat that moves on the breeze like fields of wheat and soften every landing. The wind brushes against your skin with a slight nip, but the warmth of the fox's fur and body comforts you. The fox travels beneath the light of the moon that rises above the pond the shade of a cantaloupe. Peachy moonlight and the autumn leaves of surrounding trees reflect on the water. The fox stops at the edge of the pond and you and the witches slide down his ribs and land on the ground. Piles of colorful leaves line the edge of the pond. You select a leaf in your favorite hue and shape as the witches select a red, orange, and gold leaf that they bring to the pond's edge. You follow behind and place the leaf in the water and balance on it to ride it like a raft across the pond. Fairies appear in the sky, twinkling as brightly as the thousands of stars that fill the velvety purple-black canvas of night. 
you inhale deeply, taking in the sweet smells of an autumn night and the aroma of the leaf that sails on the crisp breeze across the pond. The small pond feels as vast as the ocean. You clasp your tiny hands behind your head as you float and surrender to the majesty of this perfect autumn night. You bathe in the moonlight listening to the fairies as they sing and recharge themselves before the full moon. They revel in this time for transformation that comes every month. Cora stands atop her maple leaf and uses a blue spruce needle to paddleboard across the pond. Carla and Ava lounge across their leaves with their hearts pointed toward the sanguine moon. You begin to feel quite tired as the cool, clean air fills your lungs. Cora asks if everyone would like to return to their cottages and everyone agrees. The fairies come to assist their delicate fingers grasp the stems of the floating leaves. Their sparkling wings flutter, scattering glittery dust onto the water as they bring you safely to the shore. You climb atop shimmering violet and ebony stones that lead to the upturned crate and tiny cottages. For years to come, you will most remember the sensation of being part of something great, bigger and beyond you, even when you were at your smallest. The way the witch's capes and garments ride on the wind like black emerald, purple, and red velvet waves, the otherworldly sheen of the moonlight on dewdrops and on your skin. The confidence you feel as you climb the once tiny and now seemingly tall ladder to the cottages. You hoist yourself one rung at a time feeling the strength in your arms and your core muscles as you fight off the tiredness to arrive at the top. Carla strikes a match the size of a torch against a thimble and goes from one thimble to the next to start four separate fires outside the miniature homes. Basking in the warm firelight, you look out on the dreamy landscape. You take in the autumn leaves, saturated in pearly orange moonlight. You stare at the reflective pond, rippling in the fall breeze like a satin sheet. Carla reminds everyone of the biscuits, and Ava and Cora climb into the basket to pull back the tea towel. Steam rises from the baked bread that has remained warm. They split open two biscuits that are the size of queen-sized beds, and you all lounge on the fluffy bread comforted by the buttery smell. You grab a handful of the biscuit's interior and eat it as it melts on your shrunken tongue and warms you from the inside out. You feel so full, 
satiated and relaxed. You wish to stay here forever in this magical world of play and fun. Being the size makes everything seem so plentiful and abundant. All your needs are met in the most creative ways. Tiredness takes hold and your eyelids become heavy. The witches wind down as well. And one by one, you return to your unique cottages. You step through the open door and remove your cape and hang it on a small tack. You inhale the fragrant dried lavender and sage. As you climb over the twigs and onto the feather mattress. The evening has been rife with silky and downy textures and moments of softness that make slumber come easily. You close your eyes and drift between worlds as a loon cries out her midnight song. The cotton puff pillows contour around your head and neck as you let go of this imaginary world and drift into another land of dreams knowing that each new dreamscape will offer serenity, beauty, and creative worlds that cater to your whims and needs. You drift across the magical bridge to healing respite, finding peace, finding stillness, finding Sleep. It's time to dream away.